This man is a moral philosopher and has long been a civil rights campaigner. Over the last 30 years, he has devoted his life to studying differences in IQ in over 30 countries. His name is James Flynn. What he discovered turned IQ research on its head and became known as the Flynn effect. All throughout the 20th century, we can trace that each generation is scoring higher than its predecessor. That is, the average person on Ravens today is by definition 100. The average person in 1900 scored against current norms would have been somewhere between 50 and 70. Trawling through huge quantities of raw data, Flynn noticed that IQ scores have risen on average by about three points per decade. He also found that the rise for black Americans was even faster. The IQ gap between blacks and whites was actually closing. Blacks have gained at a faster rate than whites since World War II, certainly. Whites have been gaining something under three-tenths of a point a year, and blacks at about 4.45 points a year. In other words, blacks have been gaining about 50% faster during that period. Now, does that prove that the difference between the two isn't genetic? Well, it certainly shows that differences as great as the IQ gap can be closed environmentally. Flynn's explanation isn't that we're getting smarter or that our ancestors were dumber. The fundamental difference, he says, is that our great-grandparents had learned how to manipulate the world practically. But we've learned how to classify it intellectually. If they were asked to explain the relationship between a dog and a rabbit, they are likely to have said that one chases the other. We're more likely to say they're both mammals. Flynn believes that in the last half century, we have undergone a profound change in the way we think. A change that few of us are even aware of. He calls it the cognitive revolution. Since the end of World War II, our everyday lives have become ever more dominated by the need to think in abstract categories. The explosive growth of science and technology in the workplace, at home and in our schools, requires that we sort our world by conceptualizing it. In essence, we view the world through what Flynn calls scientific spectacles. Now, it so happens that this kind of thinking is exactly what's required to do well in an IQ test. Which means we can give a fairly precise definition of what IQ tests measure. They give a score not for intelligence as such, but for our adaptation to modernity. This is why you get very low IQs in subtropical Africa and even in northern Africa. These are people on the cusp of modernity and their IQs are just taking off like crazy. And over the next century, we may well see the developing world match the developed world for IQ.